Japanese rock candy, and I believe it's called Kohakuto. This Japanese candy is pretty cool because it's hard like rock candy on the outside, but then inside it's nice and chewy and gummy. And um, I had seen a lot of bloggers do it in the past couple of months. And um, very recently, Emmy in Japan decided to do one, and I was like, hey, maybe I want to give this a try. So I started watching a lot of videos. It was like videos from Japan, videos from Korea, videos from the States. And a couple of like really big problems kept hitting me, and that was really standardization. People would mention different amounts of agar, different types of agar, how much sugar to put in, and then also like what temperature do you really boil because you're essentially making candy. But people couldn't get their candies to solidify or jellify, and there's nothing crunchy about it. And um, so I think a lot of that has to do with how long you cook your candy for. Some people would say, you know, like, boil it just until, you know, the sugar is dissolved. That could be like two minutes. Some people were like, oh, boil it on low heat for 30 minutes. So uh, there was a lot to be desired. The other thing that people complained about that you can't really get around is that um, the taste for this is just sugar. So some people recommended, oh, like, let's try it with juice, let's try it with sodas. In terms of jellification, just that so you guys know, is that um, many times acidic substances affect how agar and affect how gelatin gelatinizes. Sometimes it kind of breaks apart the bonds and makes them a little bit weaker. So I didn't really want to do too, too much in terms of having acidic juices. With the amount of sugar that you put, I just don't think that juice would necessarily even taste like juice afterwards. Like there's no way that anything with that much sugar will just not taste like sugar afterwards. So my way around that is I actually bought some different extracts. So I ended up using strawberry extract. A lot of uh, flavor has to do with smell as well. And I think for the most part for these raw candies, it's just fun to eat. It's going to end up tasting like sugar anyways, but if you kind of put a little bit of essence in there, it kind of smells like strawberry. Maybe it'll conjure up, you know, little tastes of strawberry as well. And I think that that's really the best way to go about uh, in terms of flavoring these candies. So I decided to kind of map out the process and then really get a set recipe down for you guys. So in terms of the type of agar, I know that a lot of people talked about Japanese agar and then people talked about the Thai agar. I use the agar from Thailand, which is usually the agar that you can find most in grocery stores. I'm gonna link to that type of agar down below just so that we know. And then the second thing was um, agar amounts. So some people did five, some people did 10 because they said it didn't you know, firm hard enough. So I did mine at 7.5. I can tell you right now that you can probably go between five to 10 grams depending on how chewy or kind of like hard you like your gummy candies to be. So the third thing that I did, and I think that this was most important, was settle on a temperature to boil this candy to because it is a sugar candy. And for those of you who have ever made candy before, you know that you know according to a candy thermometer, there's things like the thread stage, which is usually for syrups, and then you have softball and hardball, and those are for you know like caramels and fudges. Essentially what boiling the sugar does and bringing it to a specific temperature is you're adjusting for the concentration of sugar, right? So you're boiling away more liquid or you're boiling away less liquid. And then of course that all affects how hard or how soft your final product or of, of your candy is going to be. I think what most people were trying to say was um, when they were looking for consistency was the thread stage. I settled on that and that's going to be about 230 degrees Fahrenheit and I'll put the, the Celsius down below and that seemed to work actually wonders. So anyways, make sure to stay tuned until after the recipe for me to try these guys out for you. Okay, so super easy candy recipe. I'm gonna start off by boiling two cups of water over about medium high heat, and I'm gonna add in 14 grams of this agar agar powder. Now the brand, again, matters. It is the Thai brand, it is the trademark brand, and I will put that down below. And um, 14 grams is gonna be about two tablespoons and two teaspoons or so. So um, I'm, as I'm bringing it up to a boil, I'm gonna stir it just to make sure that the agar doesn't settle and doesn't burn, and then I'm gonna put a lid on it because sometimes it takes a longer time for it to dissolve. So just about like two minutes or so, um, and then I'm just gonna scrape around. So after all of the agar has melted, I am going to put in a lot 
of sugar. It's gonna be about four cups of sugar uh, that I'm putting in right now. It is, it is candy, it is for decoration. Y'all shouldn't, you know, eat it all in one go. So I'm gonna bring this guy back up to a boil, uh, but before I do, I'm going to put in a candy thermometer and this is what's going to standardize the whole thing and make sure that you guys can all reproduce the results. I'm gonna bring this mixture up to 230 degrees, which is the thread stage in sugar. Now be careful and make sure to use a high enough pot because this guy does have a tendency to bubble over and you know, every once in a while, you might have to lift it off of the stove so that the bubbles subside. I'll say that it took about 10 minutes to get here, so uh, make sure to have a little patience with this one. So after the temperature has been reached, now this glass has been oiled because uh, this can get pretty, pretty sticky. So make sure to kind of grease that pan first and then pour everything in. And what I'm adding is a quarter teaspoon of strawberry flavoring and that just makes everything smell like strawberries. Doesn't necessarily make it taste like strawberry because it still tastes like sugar. Now I'm gonna use a mix of food coloring. So I'm gonna start off with this purple violet, which I thought would be a really pretty purple violet and it really kind of turned out black. And the more I stirred it, the more this black spread, um, but you, you guys will see later, it actually turns out quite well. Afterwards, I go in with green food gel coloring, and this one's a little bit nicer because it's lighter, and you guys can definitely think about that as you're adding in your food coloring. Like maybe you want it to be all pink, maybe you want it to be something, you know, pretty and fun for Valentine's Day. Um, so both of these were gels, and then I added a yellow and an orange, and both of those were liquid food coloring, so both of those work. <laughs> So yeah, the purple is a bit dark, so you can't really see it now until I lift it up later. The agar sets pretty quickly. I would say around two hours or so after this guy cools. So um, I actually put this uh, in the refrigerator overnight and you can see actually some of the sugar crystals have already started forming because as this guy dries, there's going to be a layer of crunchy sugar crystals around each of the jellies. And um, just wanted to lift that up for you guys. It is like a cloud of darkness, but I promise you it is going to look good right afterwards. So it's not that it's hard, but it is harder than I thought, kind of like a very hard gummy bear. So um, just kind of make sure that your spatula is either greased or you put a little bit of water on it and um, it should make it a little bit easier. So yeah, slight accident in taking this guy out, but I was gonna pull it apart anyways. And some people choose to use a knife and cut, you know, like kind of nice squares out of this. But if you want it to really look like rocks, like rocks in the dirt, I suggest that you guys pull this apart. And the more imperfections that you get in it, the better, because it really exposes the different facets of the rock and you get like different shines and different textures that way. So I definitely recommend kind of like playing around with it and ripping it apart. One thing that is nice about using more agar and also boiling this candy up to a certain temperature is that you get kind of a harder jelly, so you are able to rip and get more facets into it. Now, for my other side, I decided to cut just like long strips out and to see what happens, and this is actually what happened. It like looks like little glass pieces, and it was absolutely gorgeous. So I continue cutting just like little strips out and um, to know that you can kind of play around with this and then kind of get different shapes that way. 
so these are they gorgeous and spectacular and um, they turned out like nice and ambery and earthy in tone I thought it was gonna come out horribly but these are like real actually real looking rocks so now here goes the aging process you need to wait about three days and every day I will check in with you guys but um, a little bit of the sugar should start to develop and then that crunchy coating uh, will start developing as well So yeah, by day three, you can see that all of these rocks have a nice sugary candy coating around it and they're not shiny anymore. And when you pick them up and you touch them, you know, you can definitely feel that it's hard outside and um, it's going to be, you know, fairly crunchy when you guys bite in. So um, I can't wait for the taste test. Alrighty, so let's try these guys out. Oh my god. I feel like I have to brush my teeth right after eating these. They're so sugary. Right after you get through kind of that thinner layer of like really crunchy sugar, it turns into like jelly right away and it's a good jelly it's like a nice chewy jelly and I imagine if you wanted a harder jelly you could just probably um, use more agar to this I'll just put this out on. and now let's try one of the um, the rocky ones the bigger ones so that is something like that It's so sweet. Wow. Yeah, definitely gonna brush my teeth after this. Um, hmm. So for those with the bigger pieces, they're nice because there's more jelly in the center. It's still very agar-y though. It's not, you're not gonna get like a lot of like the pull or the kind of like the bounce from, from gelatin or like, you know, kind of that gummy bear bounce. You're going to get like a nice kind of, um, firmer you can bite through it but it's not going to be as like springy so yeah these guys are really fun I think that you could do a lot of applications with them I mean obviously leaving one like this looks super super cool for you know your guests to come in I've seen people decorate with um, cupcakes or on top of cakes or whatnot anyways I hope you guys enjoyed watching me make this recipe um, it's actually pretty fun uh, to make so I hope you guys give it a try and uh, I will see you guys again next time bye